Game five between the Islanders and Bruins after two very tight and chippy contests on Long Island. This series is shifting back to Boston. Uh, is the home ice advantage enough for you to back the Bruins as minus 190 favorites, Jeff? Uh, no. I mean, quite frankly, no, it's not. I, I do kind of, you know, I've, the Bruins have been better at home. They've outscored their opponents 15 to nine so far in the playoffs, but just looking at this series, it's not enough for me to go and say, oh, yeah, let's take this like, you know, really sort of short line on the Bruins and and hope they eke out another win over the Islanders. The Islanders are playing really good hockey right now. And I think the biggest thing for me with them, they're rolling three scoring lines. You can even say they're getting four scoring lines because they're getting contributions from their fourth liners. That's scary. Like the fact Matthew Barzell is sort of awoken from his slumber. That's scary is for Boston Bruins fans, in my opinion. Um, this is an Islanders team that obviously, you know, that that's kind of been their Achilles heel. If they keep getting scoring from across the board, you're going to see, in my opinion, three more very close games. And uh, I, I want nothing to do with lines this short. If anything, I'm going to the other side and taking the big plus money available on the Islanders today. All right, Paul, what are you or what are you deciding to do here? Well, Jeff's on to something a little bit, but I disagree with it completely. Uh, I'm going to say what those long odds tell you is that we have seen this formula play out for Boston a number of times before. This is a scenario where the bees went to Long Island and regained home ice advantage. It's like the old rom-com movies, guys. The boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girls back. Even though the Isles seem to match the bees check for check and shot for shot this far, I still view them as Boston light, and I give the bees... Uh, too much quality among their top six, and they have also got the top offensive defenseman and best goalie in this series. Betters will be attracted to the high upside of a bet on the visitors for sure, but I'm here to tell you the Bruins are going to win tonight. All right, AJ, which side are you backing? I think we have to start calling him bad take Bruno. I mean, this is just so, <laughs> just so wrong. Get the payroll, buddy. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff is absolutely right on this one. How do you pass up the aisles at plus 160 in a series that's tied two to two, especially when you consider uh, each team has won a game on the road. I, I don't think home ice advantage is as big of a, a deal in this one. Uh, you know, as, as Jeff said, after an eight game gold drought, Matthew Barzell, has goals in back-to-back -back games. Uh, and then, you know, in the Nets, even in game the three loss, Simeon Varlamov was solid, giving up just two goals on 41 shots. And on the flip side, it looks like the Bruins are once again going to be without Brandon Carlo, which is going to force Jeremy Lutz on into a top four pairing. Like, that's not exactly a best-case scenario for the Bees. Yeah, no, Ozon had that rough finish like a couple games ago. Uh, nasty little turnover there. Uh, game five, uh, though, uh, will continue with two empty net goals. If we look back to game four here, guys, uh, that made the score look like a lot worse than it really was, uh, as it was essentially a tight checking 2-1 contest. So both games in New York were low scoring affairs, but with the total sitting at five, are you looking at the over as the series shifts back to Boston? Bad take, Bruno, you're up first. Absolutely. Uh, the, the Garden will be rocking tonight. Boston has lost only twice in their last 15 home games. To me, this looks like a game where the Boston offense breaks out with a big effort. The Islanders won't keep pace, but the teams will combine to go over the number tonight. And I'm not going to give these guys any more free picks. They're going to have to pay me to give them their picks going forward. <laughs> All right, AJ, what about you? And also, like reports this morning say Tuka Rask didn't participate in Boston's morning skate. Well, I'm not worried about that at all. I, okay. He took shots ahead of time. I think it's just a, a management. He'll he'll be in in the crease. Uh, I I'm certain of it. Although you know we'll we'll get some sort of weird answer from Bruce Cassidy about who's mm -hmm. starting goaltender is because it's the NHL. But he'll he'll be between the pipes tonight. But look, doesn't matter how they go in or when they go in, as long as they go in right. First two games, you've had seven goals, and each of those brings the series totals to 22 games or 22 goals in four games. Uh, now, having said that, I don't like the amount of juice you have to give up to take the over at five when it comes in at minus 130. So I'll look to the alternate totals on the DK Sportsbook. I'll give up that extra half a goal to get plus 132 at over five and a half. Jeff, you feeling the over or the under? Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling the over. Obviously, AJ put way more research into this than me. I was just going to take the over five. Uh, at minus 130, but I, I kind of like going to that alternate puck total. The one thing about taking just the five is you have the bigger push opportunity, but I, I, I agree with Paul uh, and AJ here. I, I do like the over in this game. I think, yeah, I already mentioned, you know, Boston uh, just tends to score more uh, you know, when they're at home. They've, they've, again, 15 to nine 
uh, just in, in the playoffs alone. But that's where we saw, you know, Bergeron uh, passionate get off to the good start too. And again, since that this series has started, you have seen the Islanders come alive from top to bottom. Um, if Matthew Barzell keeps producing, you know, it's just going to have a trickle down effect. I think that at five uh, in this game, especially just with how the rest of the series has gone, I think taking the over in this one is the way to go. And you can definitely uh, take a little bit more risk by going to the alternate puck line, but getting better, uh, obviously getting a better betting, better, uh, a better betting number. <laughs> if you do that <laughs> at the five and a half. Uh, AJ, the Montreal Canadiens is shocking the hockey world. We all know by knocking off the Maple Leafs in seven games. And now they may shock the entire hockey world again by sweeping the Jets. Canadians are up three, nothing in the series. Minus 150 favorites at home. Do they complete the sweep? Well, look, sometimes you can see the exact moment that a series ends, even if it's before the final whistle. For Pittsburgh, it was the minute Jari's pass landed on the tape of Josh Bailey in game five. And for Winnipeg, it was the minute Mark Shifley made contact with Jake Evans. That was the end of this series. This is your leading goal scorer over the past five years with 143 goals over that stretch. The Jets simply don't have enough depth to overcome his absence in their top six. They've had four power play opportunities in the last two games. Not only zero goals to, sh goals to show for it, even worse, three shorthanded goals allowed. At this point, they'd be better off declining penalties like they do in the NFL. Uh, I'll take the Habs on the puck line in this one at plus 170. This team knows they need to close out Winnipeg before Shifley returns and they're playing at home tonight with last change and can capitalize on those uh, bad matchups. And Jeff, for our guy behind the scenes mentioning in the Habs six game win streak, they never trailed either. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I completely agree. This series just, it, it, you could just see it when it happened. You, you almost knew the result. The, the, the Jets don't have uh, enough depth at center to overcome this. And, and the Canadians, obviously, the veteran netminder like Carey Price and, and just young talent that has gained confidence with every start that, that he's made. Uh, it, it's just too much for, for Winnipeg to overcome. I'm expecting a close game here. If, if, you're, if I'm being dead honest, I would rather be on the under uh, five and a half goals here. I know it's a lot of juice. It's in, I think, around minus 140 right now in the DraftKings Sportsbook. I think you're going to get a close game. But at the same time, I really want no part of, of the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, I know they're they're available at big plus money, but this isn't a scenario like the Islanders who are – you gradually gaining steam. This is the complete opposite. Uh, I expect the Jets will come out with a bit of a spirited effort. Maybe they can catch the Canadians off guard early, but I, I, I would really rather just be on the Canadians and, and the under here. Paul, you want to chase Montreal as a minus 150 favorite? I hate talking about Montreal, and I want you to save this tape for AJ. I've had a hard time watching this series, guys. The Canadians are looking like the team that started the season at 7-2-1 and one, rather than the one that limped to the fourth place finish in the North Division. They're rolling four lines with no significant difference in playing time among their forwards units, uh, leaning on four veteran D, and, uh, of course, Carey Price continues to be lights out. Against all that, the Jets have no chance. They, their spirit is broken, and the Habs will complete the sweep tonight. Let's move on to the next question. That sounds good. Paul, I'll let you lead it off then. What's a player prop uh, tonight you like, either game? You, you would ordinarily look no further than the B's top line, guys. They're, in fact, the top three picks to score a goal tonight. That's no surprise, but I think we all know that they have a better than average second scoring line that's emerged ever since Taylor Hall showed up on David Krejci's wing after the trade deadline. I saw a stat that revealed a 15 to nothing shot advantage while Hot Hall was on the ice in game three. He's actually the fourth a bet on the top uh, picks among the top uh, guys to score goals tonight. And uh, that's ahead of the first Islander player, Anthony Beauvillier, for tonight's game. I expect a big game from that B second unit is what I'm saying. And the Hall will be the guy that scores the goal, paying off a plus 200. Jeff, you like a player prop in that game, or are you going to the other one? No, I'm going to go to the Islanders game. Matthew Barzell, over 2.5 shots on goal, plus 105 right now on the DraftKings Sportsbook. He's hit this over in four of his last five starts. He's averaging 2.7 shots on goal over his last 10 games. And I expect you'll see his minutes probably get bumped up just a touch here. Again, I'm expecting a little bit more scoring. I think he could get a bit of a wild and crazy uh, game five here with everything on the line. And uh, I like the way Barzell has played. He's obviously picked up the pace. So give me the over on his shots on goal total. How about you, AJ? I'll look to the other game, and honestly, I wish you could get Joel Armia specifically to score a shorthanded goal, because uh, <laughs> after last night's game, it, it could certainly happen again. He's got eight in his career between the regular and postseason. 
in lieu of that, I'll take him as an anytime goal scorer in this one at plus 265. That fourth line of Armia, uh, Stahl, and Perry has combined for eight goals in the playoffs here. You could hedge a little and take, you know, two of these guys maybe and uh, still come out in the black here. Perry comes in at plus 250, Stahl at plus 340. Uh, so you could take any two of those and still uh, get your money back if only one of them scores. Well, Jeff, for DFS purposes, I know people at home, you can play these games in the showdown format. If you had to pick your favorite captain, who would it be? I'm going to go to, I'm going to go a little bit different. I, I think, again, I think you're going to get a lower scoring game in, in the Winnipeg uh, Montreal series. You could definitely go carry price, but what about Shea Weber? I mean, Jeff Petrie, a little bit banged up, actually questionable for this game. Somebody to keep an eye on. Uh, I think Weber's going to play a ton. Uh, he's been playing a ton already, over 25 minutes. But if you get a lower scoring contest, Weber finds a score sheet as well. He could just pile up the block shots or shots on goal in a game like that. So, uh, again, it's a little bit of a contrarian move. You know, Carey Price probably a little safer. But uh, Weber definitely going to see a ton of ice today for Montreal. All right, AJ, how about you? Well, I'll follow up with Jeff said, Petrie out already. Uh, you got to check rotowire.com. I'll give a plug for, for our guys over there doing all the hard work. Uh, we've got him ruled out for you. I'm absolutely going to pay up that big, big price tag to Captain Carey Price tonight. Leads the NHL right now with a .938 save percentage in the postseason, including that game two shutout. He's been absolutely unbeatable in this series. There's no offense from Winnipeg right now. And no goal, no question, if you're playing classic, he's my goalie tonight. All right, Paul, bring us home. Your favorite DFS captain play of the night. I've been white hot with this question. It's now six games in a row where my guy has paid off. Uh, you should know that I picked Marchessault on Friday. We didn't get to that question then. And again, I had him on Saturday. You know how he did. Four goals over the two games. Tonight, I go back to the crease and make Tuka Rask my captain pick. I expect a low goal total on the Islander side of the ledger of the game in this game and uh it'll be mostly about a boston romp 